The idea of entrusting our newborn daughter to my sister-in-law every day sparked an unexpected call from my husband, Carson, during his workday. It was unlike him to sound so frustrated, he's usually calm and composed. I was caught off guard by his reaction and rushed to explain, aiming to dissolve the confusion swiftly. Our daughter, Luna, is right here at home, sleeping peacefully, I assured him, puzzled by his surprise and the series of questions that followed. It was clear we were both lost in this unexpected mystery. Determined to uncover the truth, I decided it was time to have a talk with my sister-in-law. My name is Aurora, and I've been married to Carson for four years. He's just a year my senior, and recently we've been blessed with Luna, our first child. Luna is absolutely enchanting, but navigating motherhood for the first time has its challenges. Since my parents are far away, going back to my childhood home for support after childbirth wasn't an option. From the moment we left the hospital, it's been mostly just me during the day, handling everything on my own. Kirsten has been an incredible support. His attention and care for Luna, even after long days at work, have been my saving grace. No matter the sleepless nights or Luna's restlessness, he's there, never uttering a complaint. His patience and gentle nature have made this journey manageable and much less stressful. I couldn't be more thankful for his support. So his sudden outburst over the phone took me by surprise. Aurora, I just heard from mom and I need to know what's happening, he demanded, his tone laced with confusion and frustration. Your mom? What are you talking about? I was bewildered by his mention of leaving our newborn with Liliana every day. Liliana, Carson's sister, lived a short walk away with their parents. Working from home, she was able to look after their mother, who had a bad back. But why would she be taking care of Luna without my knowledge? Pearson's concern grew. How can you think it's okay to leave our two-week-old baby with someone? Especially when Liliana has never cared for a baby before. I'm worried, Aurora. His words only added to the confusion and concern. It was clear there had been a huge misunderstanding. I knew then that it was crucial to speak with Liliana and get to the bottom of this mix-up. Feeling tired after having a baby is natural, but I was puzzled when you mentioned leaving our little one with Liliana without talking to me first. Your words caught me off guard, creating a sense of urgency I couldn't ignore. Confused, I responded, I'm lost here. Why is Liliana taking care of a newborn, and why did your mom feel the need to call you? Why should I have to check in with you on this? Your concerns baffled me. You mean you've been leaving our daughter with Liliana for nearly two weeks? You asked. It turned out Liliana had kept quiet, not wanting to strain her bond with us, but your mom couldn't watch silently and reached out to you. I was taken aback by your story, especially since our daughter was safely at home with me. I had many questions but knew it was crucial to address the confusion right away. Our daughter's asleep in her crib, right here with me, I clarified. Your surprised reaction only deepened our mutual bewilderment. I'm just as confused as you are. We've barely left home except for doctor's visits. I haven't visited your family's place or seen Liliana since she dropped by after the baby was born. Then whose child is Liliana caring for? You wondered aloud. The mystery deepened as we pondered why Liliana would claim to be looking after our daughter. Each question led to another, leaving us scratching our heads. As our lunch break ended, indicated by the phone's chime, I made up my mind to get to the bottom of this. I'll talk to Liliana and see why she'd say this. If she's mixed up and thinks she's taking care of our Luna, we need to sort it out, I decided. Planning to call your mom as well. You hesitated. Then apologized for the misunderstanding, admitting your concern for Luna. It's fine. You were worried about Luna, which is understandable. And when I told you she's safe with me, you trusted me, I reassured you. After hanging up, I promptly called Liliana. Hey Liliana, it's been some time. Can we talk? There's something important I need to ask you. Aurora, I've got something to say as well. You see, Liliana and I are pretty much the same age. Since the days I started dating Carson, Liliana and I hit it off immediately. We'd often hang out together, which is why it struck me as odd that she hadn't said a word about this entire mix-up. It puzzled me why she'd make up such a story. 
Just when I was about to delve deeper, I had a chat with Carson. Liliano, why on earth did you think you were looking after Luna? I've never left her with anyone, I questioned, confused. Liliana sounded just as surprised, and right then, I could hear the sound of a baby crying over the phone. It was clear Liliana was indeed taking care of a baby. From her sincere tone, I sensed Liliana wasn't deceiving me. She genuinely believed she was helping with Luna. To clear the air, I explained. Luna's here with me, sleeping peacefully. I'm as puzzled as you are about this whole baby situation. How did you end up with a baby and why did you think it was Luna? Liliana's next words were even more baffling. Last week, your dad came by and left a baby with me, claiming you were overwhelmed and needed support with Luna, she revealed, referencing my father-in-law. I was floored by this revelation and couldn't hide my shock. What? I exclaimed. Liliana then shared her fears. I was terrified I've never looked after a baby before. I thought about calling you, but your dad warned me it would only upset you and accused me of not caring about my sister-in-law's well-being. I've been trying to juggle this with my job too. It dawned on me that the entire scenario stemmed from a lie concocted by my father-in-law, yet it was still a mystery who the baby in Liliana's care was. I considered clarifying this mess with him directly, so I asked Liliana if he was around. He's not here right now. He usually returns late, picks up the baby claiming he's taking her back to you, and leaves again only to return after 30 to 40 minutes, she explained. Angered by my father-in-law's deceit involving me and my daughter, I knew it was time for a direct confrontation. Understood. I'll need to discuss this with Carson and we might just pay a visit tonight, I concluded, preparing to unravel this mystery once and for all. After ending the call, I promptly emailed my husband, sharing the bewildering tale unfolded by his sister. I believe we should talk to dad directly about this, he suggested in response. So when Carson arrived home, we made our way to my in-laws with Carson, relaying his own conversation with his mom along the journey. His mom was equally shocked, having been under the impression that the baby at their house was her granddaughter, a revelation that took us all by surprise. Carson lamented that Luna's first introduction to the family was marred by such chaos. His mom, hindered by a bad back, hadn't yet met Luna, and we had hoped for a more joyful introduction once she was ready for visits. Upon reaching my in-laws, the atmosphere was one of confusion, with my mother-in-law and Liliana visibly perplexed. Liliana broke the silence, voicing her concern that their father hadn't returned with the baby they were caring for. Amidst the awkwardness, I introduced our daughter, Luna, to her grandmother. The tension eased slightly as my mother-in-law admired Luna, remarking on her resemblance to Carson as a baby and expressing her happiness at finally meeting her. She empathized with our frustration over the mix-up, apologizing for the mess. Liliana, equally perplexed, questioned the identity of the child she had been tending to, criticizing her father for the unnecessary confusion and the strain it put on her, believing she was caring for Luna. Trying to diffuse the frustration, Carson pointed out that Liliana should have realized the baby wasn't Luna. Liliana defended herself, suggesting that all babies look alike to her and that she had doubted the baby's identity, but thought perhaps baby's appearances changed quickly over time. The tension escalated when their father-in-law returned, surprised to find us there. His panicked reaction betrayed the fact that he was the architect of this entire farce. The room filled with a silent agreement among us, our stern gazes turning towards him, demanding an explanation. Overwhelmed by the collective scrutiny, he began to fumble for words, unable to justify his actions. Oh, Aurora, it's been ages. What brings you here today? Did you forget something at our place? Liliana, appearing somewhat confused by her father's facade, was criticized by him for not checking for any forgotten items. I was seething with anger at our father-in-law for concocting lies using my and my daughter's names and then attempting to pass the blame onto Liliana. Holding my daughter closer, I noticed Carson and Liliana were equally incensed. Their hands balled into fists, signaling their frustration. I couldn't hold back. Dad, are you really going to pretend like nothing's wrong? This seems beneath even you. 
His puzzled look at my raised voice signaled he wasn't prepared for our confrontation. Carson and Liliana wasted no time in pressing him for answers. Dad, why did you lie about Aurora leaving Luna here? Why involve us in this charade with a baby that isn't even related to us? Liliana added. You had me taking care of a child I didn't even know, under the impression it was my niece. I can't believe you'd do this. It's affected my work greatly. Cornered by our collective interrogation, our father-in-law struggled to find a response. Amidst this tense confrontation, my mother-in-law's reaction was notably different. She looked as if she'd seen a ghost, murmuring, no, you couldn't possibly still be involved with her. Her words left us dumbfounded, and our father-in-law started sweating profusely, playing dumb in the face of these new revelations. Carson's patience had reached its limit. Dad, enough is enough. Stop pretending you're innocent. It's clear you've been lying through your teeth. Just come clean. Even as Carson tried to maintain his composure, his anger was palpable. Dad, you've exploited Aurora and Luna with your lies and you owe Liliana a massive apology. Taking care of a newborn is no small feat, especially for someone like Liliana, who's never cared for a child. The stress you've caused her is unforgivable. Despite our father-in-law's attempts to deflect, Kirsten relentlessly pursued the truth, making it clear that no amount of excuses could justify the deception and turmoil he had caused. My husband, relentless in his pursuit for the truth, finally cornered our father-in-law into a confession that left us all speechless. That child is mine, he admitted quietly, his words like a bombshell that halted everything around us. Kirsten's initial reaction was disbelief, his face frozen in shock, while Liliana and I were similarly struck mute by the revelation. It was my mother-in-law who shattered the ensuing silence. Her voice quivered with emotion, tears pooling in her eyes as she confronted her husband. I knew it. You're still seeing her. I was a fool to believe your lies and forgive you years ago. Confusion spread across Carson's face. What are you talking about? He asked, prompting an even graver admission. Our father-in-law's complexion drained further as my mother-in-law divulged the painful truth of his past affair, a secret kept during the time of our wedding, roughly four years ago. She revealed how she had forgiven him after his promises of fidelity, a decision she now regretted amidst the current turmoil. The realization that Luna was mistaken for Carson's sister because of the familial resemblance hit us all hard. My mother-in-law's sorrow escalated into tears, her grief resonating with me, fueling a growing anger towards our father-in-law. Regaining his composure, Carson confronted our father-in-law with palpable outrage. Dad, you've done the unthinkable. Not only did you deceive us, but you also betrayed mom for the second time. How could you? His voice echoed the disbelief and anger we all felt. Liliana's reaction was one of horror and disgust. What do you mean, my child? You had a child with another woman and left that child with me, treating me like a nanny? This is unfathomable. I can't even look at you right now, she exclaimed, her voice tinged with revulsion. Despite the vehement reproach from his children, our father-in-law responded with a dismissive chuckle, attempting to downplay the gravity of his actions. Calm down. What's done is done. The mother didn't want a relationship or money, she just needed someone to care for the child while she worked, he tried to explain, trivializing the situation. At this point, I couldn't contain my outrage any longer. Enough. Your actions are indefensible. Bringing a life into this world isn't something to laugh off or dismiss. Do you even grasp the seriousness of your actions? At your age, to behave this irresponsibly. My words were a mixture of disbelief and anger towards a man who failed to understand the magnitude of his actions, a man who thought he could simply laugh away the consequences of his betrayal and deceit. In an unexpected moment, my father-in-law lost his balance and fell down, but no one came forward to assist him. Instead, the atmosphere turned tense as Liliana began to express her deep frustration, saying, You've let us down too many times. We can't accept you as part of our family anymore. I can't bear to be around you, and I don't want to see you again." Despite the harsh words thrown at him, 
My father-in-law attempted to dismiss their impact, urging everyone not to speak so harshly. Witnessing this, I found myself unable to contain my disappointment and looked at him with a mix of disbelief and anger. I can't continue pretending everything is fine. It's over between us, I declared. My father-in-law, trying to smile through the tension, suddenly seemed older as his face showed the weight of the situation. You forgave me before, he reminded, but the atmosphere had shifted. He tried to justify his actions by suggesting that his mistakes, meant to relieve stress, somehow benefited the household's peace. However, his argument fell on unsympathetic ears as he desperately appealed to my mother-in-law, fearing the loss of the life they built together. You won't really leave me, will you? We've spent decades together, he pleaded. But his words only highlighted the gap between them. My mother-in-law firmly rejected his plea, tired of his excuses and the pain caused by his betrayal. Enough is enough, she said, ready to end their marriage, showing him the reality of his actions and the collective decision to move forward without him. Why don't you just stay with her? I asked, disbelief coloring my tone. Wait, we can figure this out, he pleaded, attempting to downplay his actions as a mere mistake, insisting that his heart belonged only to his wife. Despite his appeals, the air was thick with betrayal, and my sister-in-law's frustration boiled over. We're wasting our breath here. This discussion is pointless, she declared, her decision final. The plan was clear they would leave, taking their mother with them, and my father-in-law was to keep his distance. I don't ever want to see you again. Leave now, Liliana commanded, her voice firm. Despite the clear directive, my father-in-law remained rooted to the spot, leading to Carson stepping in to enforce the decision physically. Please, just one more chance, my father-in-law begged. But his pleas fell on deaf ears as they turned away from him, leaving him alone with his regrets. As Liliana had foreseen, life quickly spiraled downwards for my father-in-law. Struggling with daily tasks and living in a neglected home, he sought help from his mistress, only to find the door closed in his face. She had no intention of marrying him, and with her own responsibilities and no financial support, she demanded alimony, dragging my father-in-law into legal battles over financial support. In the meantime, my sister-in-law and mother-in-law settled into an apartment close by. As weeks turned into a month since the upheaval, my visits became more frequent, bringing Luna along. My bond with Liliana remained unchanged, a testament to the strength of our relationship. My connection with my mother-in-law was also strong, and I looked forward to building a future together, supported by my husband's sister-in-law and mother-in-law, focused on providing a loving environment for my daughter.